everyone, I'm coming at you from Portugal. Um, I know it's been a while since I've posted a video and that is because I've been going through a really huge transition in my life and I needed time to come a little bit more inward and not uh, share as much content. So if you're new to this content, then my name is Shay and I am the founder of My Freedom Frequency, which is a space where we explore how to own your fullest expressed self. So that is through ways that you communicate, ways that you embody your feminine and masculine energy, really how to own who you are in a powerful way through mindfulness, embodiment work, compassion, and other exploration. So today I wanted to share something short with you that I shared on my Instagram stories. If you aren't following me, I'm active on there daily. So my little follow is down there or there at the bottom somewhere. And this is inspired by how I am moving through a really difficult time emotionally. So part of really claiming our fullest expression is to be true to what is present for us. In other words, that means not rejecting who we are in any moment and also not identifying with it. Because we aren't free if we think that we're locked into a certain way of being, a certain expression. And we aren't free if we're repressing it because it's still there. Certain feelings, thoughts are there, but we're like, you know, pushing it away. So really, as the saying goes, the only way through is through. And... It's about recognizing that when you have moments where you're really struggling in a certain emotion that arises, what can we do with that? Now, often what we do do is distract. We do anything we can but feel what we don't want to feel. And why don't we want to feel it? Oh, that's easy. It just feels bad. It's uncomfortable. We don't want to feel like that. So of course we're going to try to fix it through doing something, some form of entertainment, food, people, certain actions, busying ourselves, work, whatever we choose in that moment, if it's a distraction, isn't actually helping. Now I want to make a distinction between how distractions can offer some value, but only temporarily. So for me, I was dealing with such intense loss, grief, pain, physical pain, that I couldn't clearly be in that I couldn't I didn't feel like I had the strength to hold myself in that and so doing things like taking rest from it it was I was physically being depleted of of energy to do anything with it that I did have to take myself for a walk walk watch something talk to someone and it was a form of distracting against what was happening. It was a form of rerouting my focus, but it didn't heal where that feeling was coming from. You know, it didn't heal the core root of it, which I'm still navigating. So I think the, the real distinction here is that if we just keep distracting, we just keep putting band-aids over the wound that never gets a chance to heal properly. And it's like it stays like an open wound. We just keep putting something over it. Now, sometimes the Band-Aid is helpful because we put the Band-Aid there. And then when we have enough space, time, resources, we can take the Band-Aid off and then really tend to the wound properly. 
but if we're continuing to just put it over and not really tending to the wound, that is where the distraction is not helpful. So when we feel as if there is a little bit of strength, spaciousness, courage to sit with what is there, this is how we can move through those intense moments. I've been feeling motions of grief come up and I've been also noticing myself reach towards something else, my phone, my laptop, searching that thing that I wanted to search an hour ago, but now's a really good time because I feel so shit. And what I've been doing in the moments I notice myself do that is put down or not reach toward if I'm like, I haven't gotten it yet. I stop myself, I pull back and I actually take that moment, like that moment, exact moment to sit, close my eyes and feel. And often the thing that we're feeling when we truly sit and feel it is far less painful than our mind was telling us that it was going to be. Is it still painful? It depends what the emotion is. Sometimes not. Sometimes, yeah, it was for me. But what we do with that, when we see that, when we shine light on that, It brings it to surface. It validates our experience. We don't feel in discord with ourselves because the discord happens when we are feeling a certain way but doing something else entirely and rejecting that feeling, not looking at it, not acknowledging it. So we don't feel like we're in alignment with who we are in that moment. It's not to say that the grief is who you are but that is part of your experience. And if you want to come back into the alignment of your peace, your sovereignty, your power and your joy, then you need to move what's in the way of that. And that is the grief. And we can't move that. We can't allow that to move if we're focused on something else over here while this stays there. So sitting with it, and I often ask myself questions, how do I feel? Okay. What else? Why do I feel like that? What is my mind trying to tell me about that? If that needed something from me, what is that? And it's holding a state of self-compassion. It's holding a state of not trying to fix and force and just be better instantly. It's actually a state of surrender, surrendering to what is there and welcoming it. Not like, oh, you're so welcome, grief. Come, I like you. But like, all right, I'm feeling grief. Can I welcome this? I see you, grief. I see you. I can feel you in my chest. When you speak to it in that kind of way as well, then you're actually separating yourself from the feeling. You are not the one suffering from the grief as a victim, but you have separated the grief that you are speaking to with the you that is beyond grief. And that can also give you a lot of soothing, a lot of spaciousness, It's quite a restful state to be because you're not feeling like you're being pulled and squashed by this grief. So I wanted to share that with you because no matter what you're going through in your personal life, there may be things happening in the world right now. Well, there are, but they may be affecting you in such a way where you're feeling intense emotions. And maybe like me, you started to develop a pattern and like everyone does, of distracting yourself, moving away, not looking at it. And sometimes you might have to do that in order to get relief from the intensity. But again, when you have a little bit more time, some softness and self-love, some strength maybe after you talk to a friend, to come back to the feeling, to see the feeling, to hold it with self-compassion, to ask it, what it's trying to tell you and what it needs. 
not trying to force it to heal or stop, but to just be with it. This is where I'm finding my power, stability, grounding, healing. And I hope that this video serves you in a similar way. Know that, again, you can check out all of my programs, courses that I have up online or that I'm running. There's a women's circle about to start in October, a global online women's circle. And I also offer one-to-one -one mentorship. I only ever take on two clients at a time in that because I give a lot of energy to those that I'm mentoring in basically whatever their soul is looking to expand into and how I can support with that. So I hope that you feel a little bit more ease and peace in this moment and I'm sending you my love.